Hi everybody, Mrs. Sullivan here. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about cutting and the progression of cutting skills with some activities that you can work on with uh, your kids at home. So one of the first steps to learning how to cut is being able to rip and tear paper. So you need to be able to isolate your thumb and pointer and grab paper and be able to rip and tear small little pieces of paper. So before I even put scissors in children's hands, I'm making sure that they are able to rip and tear and shred paper with uh, ease, okay? So being able to rip is the first step. I make lots of paper like this so my friends can cut on lines. I have little pieces of paper all probably on the floor under my desk at school right now. Uh, you need to be able to first pick up your scissors and orient them properly in your hand. So many times I'm putting the scissors down on the table and teaching friends to be able to properly pick up their scissors before we, the next stage is snipping. Okay, but let me talk about putting the scissors in your hand first, okay? So scissors uh, have a small hole for your thumb and the larger hole for your four fingers or for your three fingers with your pointer to stay on the outside. Um, if the scissors are flipped this way, sometimes children can't figure out exactly how to pick up their scissors and they get frustrated. Um, walking them through the steps, having them pick up the scissors, turn them over, so they're responsible for putting the scissors in their hand the correct way is really important so they can learn how to properly orient scissors in their hands. Uh, we have a little song <clears throat> and I just say to the kids, fingers on the bottom, thumb is on the top, open, shut, cut, 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 and we just kind of sing and playfully snip the paper for beginner cutters. So the first stage is being able to tear, then second stage is being able to snip. So that is being able to just open your scissors and squeeze your scissors shut, okay? Now, being able to teach the visual motor component of this to have your eyes focus on the line in your hand be able to successfully match up to the line and squeeze close is another step. So many kids can open and shut and snip, but we want them to stay on the line. Also, look closely here. A bad habit with first learning how to cut is snipping part way and tearing. So when I'm working with friends, I really wanna make sure they open those scissors really wide and close their scissors without tearing it. So open, close. Fingers on the bottom, thumb is on the top. Open, shut, cut, cut, cut. Your helper hand is the hand that is holding and stabilizing the paper, okay? And your working hand is your hand that's using the scissors. Your helper hand, when you're holding the paper, should be thumb up, not fingers down. I caught myself doing it. You want to be thumb up. You also want to show children that their elbow needs to be next to their body, not out here, but close to their body so their wrist is, is in an, a neutral straight position. The next, after you've mastered snipping, um, it's actually called fringing. So you're able to um, progress forward with several snips. So working on maybe a three inch line and being able to progress your scissors forward. Then doing a little bit of a longer line being able to stay on, this is just a marker, a quarter inch line, and teaching them to keep their scissors in the road with your elbow close to your body. 
Once you've mastered your straight line and you're able to progress forward, uh, you can start to do zigzag lines. And the tricky part is using your helper hand to coordinate which way you're turning the paper. You always wanna keep your scissors pretty straight. You have some movement, but really you're coordinating your helper hand to turn the paper. Stay on the road, Mrs. Sullivan, slow down. Turn the paper with your helper hand and stay on the road. Nice job. Okay. <laughs> so the next step in the progression of scissor cutting skills is being able to do curvy lines. So we're learning the these steps in this order to get ready to be able to cut out basic shapes. So once you've mastered curvy lines, you're ready to start with your circle, okay? And you're just turning that paper with your helper hand and you wanna have smooth lines. Many times you will get very, very choppy, choppy lines, and that's okay. This is a good circle. I'm proud of your effort and your trying, okay? It takes a lot of practice to stay on the lines, okay? The last um, step would be able to do your squares or your rectangles and being able to turn with your helper hand. Turn. And of course, any activity is um, more preferred with a child when it ends in something fun or something that they can feel proud of. So one of the easiest crafts to do with a beginner cutter who is just learning how to cut on basic straight lines would be um, a chain link craft. So I made a snake earlier with my son um, and you know this can be done. They feel proud of themselves after they can cut out the links themselves and with help from an adult, either tape or um, staple, you can make, make a snake and then you can decide to put your snake in different shapes of letters um, and just have fun with it. So um, really, I just, of course, with scissor skills, because scissors are sharp, make sure that you're using small, um, appropriate size scissors with maybe a rounded edge or the preschool blunted tip scissors. Um, and always, um, even when my own kids are using Play-Doh scissors that aren't sharp, I always make sure to be um, supervising them um, when they're using scissors. But these are all really important skills, um, skills for school, um, especially for um, preschool, kindergarten age students. Um, up through the years, they, they'll be expected to cut and paste for their classroom requirements. So this is um, just some information on cutting. Thanks for listening.